In December I made the terraforming tutorial, and because you don't seem to have enough with one, I'm now making another one. I'm just joking, the truth is that Axiom got a few updates since I released that video, and a lot of important tools changed while also some new useful ones were added. So a new tutorial was needed, and here I am. However, I will not be going step by step on how to use every tool, if you are looking for that, go to the old terraforming tutorial where I did that. Here, the approach is going to be slightly different, we are going to focus more on the terraforming process itself, while we see step by step how to build that small sky island that you see in the back. Ok, enough pretexts, let's begin with this. So to start off with this island, we are going to need a basic platform to build on, and we can use the shape tool for that. With the placeholder block, I always go for the diamond block, and let's create a cylinder right there. We can make it larger with the slider, and if we want to go beyond the limit, just do control click and type in any number, like 200 for example. To settle the shape in place, we just need to hit enter, and there we have it. Now, for the floating island, we need mountains down below. But working upside down is hard, and most of the tools won't work. So instead, let's work on the top side and then we can rotate the entire thing. But before building any mountains, let's slightly modify the cylindrical shape with the melt tool to bring in some variation to the basic shape from the beginning. Alright, now that we have this non-perfect shape, let's use the elevation tool which didn't suffer any major changes from the last tutorial, but it's a very important one, so let's quickly go through its basics. If it's set to rise, it will create terrain when we right-click over it. We can lower instead and it will delete the terrain, and we can flatten, which is very straightforward in the way the tool works. Now, we can increase the rate to make it work faster, and a few more options here are flatten up, which will flatten by only raising terrain, or flatten down, which will do the opposite and lower the terrain instead. Now, the most important and useful function of this tool is this button right here, which will allow us to load custom height maps. I will leave links in the description for the high maps that I use, but basically you can import brushes to raise the terrain in shapes that resemble mountains, or any shape that you want really. So if we want to rotate the high map, we need to rotate ourselves and the height map will rotate with us. We can reduce the radius of the brush by holding Ctrl and dragging the mouse wheel button to then add the smaller details in certain areas if we want, and basically in this step of the terraforming we'll just go around using this tool with different sizes, rotations and high maps to easily create the terrain shape. Spend some time with that until you end up with something that you are happy with. Then we can use the smooth tool to soften some of the noisiness that comes with these height maps. And speaking of shapes, we can even go back to the shape tool and put in some pyramids, maybe rotate them, or I think cones might work better, and right now they look weird, but then with the elevation tool and smooth tools, we can blend it more with the pre-existing terrain. And this is just another option that we have, and I think it's looking good. There's something new and useful that I want to show you here. Let's grab the elevation tool for instance, and go very strong to create an excess of terrain. We can even use the slope tool here if we want, just click and drag to create slopes of terrain along the plane, and alright, we've got a very large chunk of terrain that doesn't look interesting at all, but now we are going to carve out the shape that we want from this. So one option for that is using the melt tool, which works very well, but now there's a new tool that in my opinion does it way better, which is the lasso select tool. With this one, as you can see, we can draw a selection by hand. And the idea is pretty simple, we are going to select the chunks of terrain that we want to get rid of, for which we are going to need to increase the depth by typing in something like a hundred for instance, and simply then we can go and carve out the shape that we want. What I like about this is that we will end up with sharper shapes that are still irregular in a way, because the way in which we can draw these curves can't be perfect, which is different than if we use the cones from the shape tool. As we all know, terrain in real life is not perfectly shaped, and mountains especially suffer from erosion. So now we are going to try and simulate that with the melt tool. Go ahead and reduce the size of the brush to 1, and we are going to go around carving out some paths. What I mean by that is to think as if there was some water flowing down from the top of these mountains, eroding the terrain on its path. So just go around with the melt tool, following the natural bumps and valleys on the shapes of the mountains that you previously created. Also, you can do this in areas that you consider to be weirdly smooth, 
and just spend some time doing that. And an extra tip is to not overthink it too much. When it's done, the result can look a bit too strong, so go around and make it more subtle by smoothing it up. Then iterate a few times, marking out some of those paths again with a softer melt, or creating maybe some new ones, and then repeat the smooth until you get something that you're happy with. Then we can even go back to use the lasso select tool to remove terrain in smaller areas and create more detailed shapes, and even the elevation tool again in certain areas to bring back some of the deleted terrain. Alright, I think that's looking good enough for me. But now we need to rotate this upside down, so let's quickly see how we can do that. First, go to magic selection, increase the limit to the maximum and right click to select the entire thing. Hit Ctrl X to cut it and then rotate it using the handles. Once it's done, hit Enter and just like that we have the base shape in place for our floating island. The tools and techniques that I've shown so far are the ones that I use the most when I have to create an overall general terrain, and of course the more you practice, the better you will get at this and hopefully you'll find the process that best fits your style. Here I repeated the same thing at a smaller scale for a second island to put on top, which, as you can see, is slightly tilted, and to do that, what we have to do is follow the exact same process, only that when you rotate it upside down, check this box of unlock rotation, and then this will allow us to place it with a more interesting orientation. So far I would say that the result is quite good already, and this was done just by following some steps that are relatively simple and fast. But now let's suppose that we want to make it more interesting in terms of shape, textures or details. Well, that's when, as I always say, you need to dedicate more time to it and be more patient with the process. So this time I will take that extra time to show what things we can do to improve the terrain and break it down so that you can learn and then do it in your own terraforming project with Axiom. So first of all, let's use the rock tool and choose a second placeholder block like the gold block. And one of the rock shapes that I like the most is the bicon shape, but you can select any shape that you like. And with this we are going to right click and drag to place hanging down rocks around all the island. But to make sure we don't affect the basic terrain, let's grab a tool mask from up here and drag block into this yellow line and select air. This way, the rock tool will only affect air blocks, and if we don't like the placement of some of them, later on we can simply take them out, leaving the diamonds unaffected. So, with a lot of patience, we are going to go around placing rocks of different shapes where we see fit, or where we consider that the terrain looks too smooth or boring. And there we go, after a while, we got our islands covered in hanging down rocks that already give a lot of character and style to the terrain. The shape and texture is looking good, but let's add more things. For instance, rivers flowing around the island and dripping down from the edges. For which, we can use the path tool. But first, let's see a slightly more complex tool mask. As we did for the rocks before, we can mask only one block by doing this, so it just will target diamond blocks. But let's suppose that we want to target two blocks at the same time. For that, we need to use the logic or condition from here which will then target any block that we put inside. So for example, here we can choose block equal diamond and block equal air. And now, if we go to the path tool, we can draw the rivers and it won't affect the gold rocks that we made before. So let's grab the lapis block as our placeholder and the Cadmur Roms plane for the shape of the path and make it flat. We gotta also check the option extend to ground here, because when that is on, the path that we create is going to be extended down until it touches another block, and we are going to use that to make the rivers flow down when they reach the edge of the islands. So now we just need to play around with the nodes and sizes of the paths until we are happy with the shapes of the rivers. Then we just hit enter each time to confirm. Now, I will go around patiently adding the rivers around the terrain following the natural slopes if we have them, in a way that makes sense, at least for me. Again, this is a process that takes time, but as you can see, in the end it adds a lot of character and style to our islands. Alright, it's time for the most complicated but probably most useful part of this tutorial, the tool masks. We've seen a few basic ones for the rocks and the rivers, and I partially covered them in my previous tutorial, but the tool masks suffered some changes in the recent Axiom updates, and on top of that some new options were added. So it's definitely worth going through this again to learn a few fancy things that we can do. First of all, what is a tool mask? We can think of them as conditions that we set up before using a tool in a way that makes said tool behave in a different way. 
They are incredibly powerful and they can save you a lot of time and allow you to do things that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. The downside is that they can be hard to understand and there are so many options and combinations that we could spend several tutorials talking about them. So here I'm going to try my best to narrow down some of the most useful uses for them plus some helpful tips that will hopefully make the process of using Toolmask smoother for you in the future. For instance, let's say that we want to change all the diamond blocks that are outside to something else. So grab the AND logic, bring surface in and block equal diamond. This will only affect blocks that fulfill both requirements simultaneously. So we can paint with line wool now. And as a result, you can see that if we break inside, it has only painted the outside. This can be very useful to hollow things out, for example. The AND logic works like that. Everything that you put in here needs to be fulfilled by the blocks that you're trying to affect for the tool to work. There's another option here called can see sky. If we put that here and then paint, the tool will just change diamond blocks that have nothing above them, which in our case is useful to automatically get a simple casted shadow from the top island. If you find yourself still a bit lost, you can start with the pre-made examples from up here. These are some basic ones like the single block that we've seen and used for the golden rocks, the multiple blocks which uses the or logic and is the one that we use for the rivers, the grass surface is a bit more complex, it uses the and logic to mask only blocks that can see sky that are also air blocks that have a grass block below them and which is terrain is relatively flat and that's done with the angle mask which we will see in a second. Then we have the lower edge example, this uses the offset mask and we will see it also later on. The upper edge, which we can for instance add block equal line wool to this and this is going to affect blocks that have air above them and next to them because of the adjacent. And as a result we can get all the edges of the line wool painted with another block like red for instance which is useful for example if you want to have grass blocks in the surface but you don't like the dirt edges, with this you can cover them quickly with something else like moss blocks or green concrete to make it look smoother. Something very useful are the presets, with that we can save complicated tool masks or maybe some that we use a lot so that we don't have to create them from scratch every time that we need them. So here I have a preset set up for a basic angle mask that allows us to paint the surface where the terrain is flat. So here we have diamond blocks with an angle of 60 and a range of 30. Those are angles greater or equal than 30 basically between 90 and 30. We can use this with grey wool for instance to paint the shadow under the island. And with this as a template we can change the angle to 0 with a range of 45 and that's going to paint the terrain from underneath because it's on a steeper slope with angles between minus 45 and 45. My recommendation here is to not be scared of the feature and play around with the angles and conditions, just trial and error. You can always undo your actions and if you get something that you like, maybe save the presets with a keyword or name that you can remember. Now we can go back to the lower edge example, which uses the offset mask. We can change this to gold for instance, and as you can see this is going to affect the lower part of our rocks leaving a single layer of gold above each. That's because the offset is set to 1 in the y axis. Instead, we can change that to an offset of 2 in the x direction, change this to orange wool, and look now what happened. We are only affecting the right side of each rock, all at the same time. This is very powerful. For instance, let's say that we want to simulate that there's a light source hitting this island from that side, then with this we can very easily apply a gradient of blocks in that direction that is going to be consistent for all the rocks, regardless of where they are. Just imagine how time consuming it would be to have to paint all the rocks one by one by hand. We can add one more block to that horizontal gradient, let's say we paint it with round wool and an offset of minus one from the orange wool, and just like that we very quickly get this cool effect that later on we can replace for other better looking blocks and we can do something similar with the grey wool of the base terrain underneath. Of course there might be so many more uses and combinations of masks and there's not only one way of doing things, but hopefully with the ones that I've shown here today you can get a better idea of the potential uses of them for terraforming. Now that we have our terrain built, detailed and color coded, we can proceed with the next step and replace each placeholder block 
with the block or mix of blocks that best fits our vision. For that, let's use the magic selection, change this to any, and select the entire thing. Then we can do Ctrl R to open up the Replace tab, and we are going to change from lime wool to grass block, from green wool to green concrete powder, from white wool to oak planks, from orange to packed mud, from brown wool to um, spruce maybe, and let's change the gold to brown concrete. Yeah, that works I think, it gives a nice subtle effect to the rocks that I like. Now let's use the tool mask again so we can paint the grey wool using the gradient painter. I'm going to go with this simple gradient from clay to tough. Another cool extra use for the mask is to use it to paint with biomes. Let's choose a neighbor mask of grass block, go to the biome painter and let's use cherry blossom for instance. This is nice because it changes the color of the grass and water. And now we can for instance change this to adjacent green concrete powder and paint with maybe dark forest only on the edges of the grass. And okay, no, that's a bit too much, so let's just do planes instead. And there we go, the effect is now a bit more subtle and I think it's like a soft shadow, I, I really like this effect. Now we can do a mask of lapis to paint the water in. We might need to fix certain areas, but yeah, that's basically all for the painting. In general, this is how the island is going to look. Nothing super crazy, but I think it's very pleasant to the eyes. And that would be all that I have to say about creating the terrain itself. The rest is just going to be about how to bring this build to a more finished and polished state. So, for a start, I want to add a giant elder tree on top of the island. And to begin with the trunk, I will be using the path tool until I get a shape that I'm happy with. After playing around for a while, we got this shape for the trunk and branches, and it's looking very nice in my opinion. I used the auto shade function for the coloring in this case, because I needed something quick. And now we have the leaves in place, for which I follow the exact same technique that I explained in detail in my organics video. So if you want to create something similar, that video might be useful for you, I will also put the link to that. And up next, we are going to add the vegetation, for which we can use the clean terminator tool. Tick terrain off, and under decorations choose grass. Then you can simply paint all around with that. But if we want something a bit more specific, we can yet again use tool mask of block equal air and below equal grass block. Put it up here, and now we can use the noise painter instead and select as many different types of vegetations as we want. Short grass, tall grass, which we can right click to select the upper or lower part if we want, and we can have some ferns as well. Choose a noise pattern that you like and then paint. And that's it, play around with it to get something that you're happy with. This is also very useful for instance if we want to paint flowers on top of the water, like if they were lily pads or something. Again, select a mix of flowers that you like. Pink petals or coral work very well for this, you can right click to change some of the properties. And in the tool mask, change the below mask to water. And that's it, very easily you can get a mix of flowers floating above your rivers. You can probably see how the big and small details that we added towards the end brought this build to life, which I think is pretty cool. And that's going to be all for this custom island, so let me know what you think of this build. If you want the map download, I will put it up for my Patreon supporters. And that's it for the video of today. I hope you found this new terraforming tutorial useful, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Anyways, this has been Calvin, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.